What if you could take the scene you've set up for product photography, switch some gear around and produce a video like this for your client? What would it do for your content creation business? Alistair and I have been offering both photo and video to our clients for the last four years and we can tell you firsthand that it more than doubles the income we make for any given project. It also gives our business a competitive advantage since we can address a wider range of our clients' content needs and overall it adds stability to our business. In this video, we're going to show you what it looks like to execute a simple photo and video product shoot that results in two style product images and one social media video. We're going to show you the set design, lighting for both photo and video, and the gear we use to get results like these. But a quick message before we get into the video. Black Friday is here. Moving into 2024, brands are demanding video in their content packages more than ever before. If you're ready to either level up or expand your service offerings, our commercial product photo and video courses, Become a Brand Photographer and Become a Brand Video Creator are currently on sale. But that's not even the best part. For this Black Friday only, you can get each course together as a bundle and receive one additional user login so a friend or a business partner can join in. One of you can learn photo and the other can learn video. This is the blueprint that has helped us build a multi six figure photo and video production business. And we wanna teach you how to do the exact same thing. This offer represents over $2,000 worth of savings, but it's only here for this Black Friday period. Click the first link below the video to learn more and we'll see you inside the courses. So we've got a bathroom setup is a very simple setup. We've got a purple shower curtain, it's just from Amazon. We've got our products here for a shelfy look. And then we've got the tiled pink background from Propsyland. So that is the basics of the styling. Super easy, doesn't take long. In order to hold up our shelf as well, we kind of like seesawed it in between two blocks. Sandbag on top for extra weight. Um, and these products are actually empty. So a little tip if you're doing stuff like this, get your client to send you empty products. It's gonna make your life so much easier. So for the lighting setup, three strobe lights. We've got one here on the left, pink gel, cause I like gels, diffusion paper, which is softening that light a little bit more. If you take away the diffusion, it's just gonna look a little bit too harsh. Backlight, it's coming from top down and really it's just illuminating more of the background and behind the products. And then we have another light over here on the right, and that is illuminating our right-hand side. So very simple, right, left, backlight. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the photo and I'll walk you through the camera settings. I'm also going to insert my hand into the scene just to add that human element to the photo because we love that. So let's go into our camera settings. So for our camera settings, our shutter is one over 250. That's pretty much where I always have my shutter speed. Our aperture is F18 and ISO is at 100. I always keep my ISO at 100 unless I absolutely need to increase it. Um, and then for my strobe light intensities, they're all a little bit varied. So when you go to actually take the photo, you just need to dial in your lighting. It's gonna take a little bit of trial and error. You need to analyze how your light is interacting with your scene. So you need to be able to problem solve. You might need to shift your lights here and there. I always get the question, Amanda, where do I put my lights? Start by putting them down left and right and then just shift as you see fit. Look at your scene. Look at how the light interacts with your products and move your lights back and forth, up and down, turn the intensity up or down, depending on what is being displayed back to you in your photo. And this can take a bit of time. Sometimes when I'm doing client work, it can literally take a whole hour just to set up lighting, depending on how complex the lighting setup is. So know that you're gonna have to experiment a little bit, depending on what look you're going for. But that's the point, experiment, be patient and problem solve. All right, I'm gonna put my camera on 10 second timer because I'm gonna whack my hand in. So that's on timer and let's go. 
going to come from a little bit from the back. Okay. I like options and I like variety and I love color and I love different things. We're going to change out the backdrop to yellow tile because I think that's fun. Purple and yellow, they're bright, bold colors, bit of color contrast. It could look shit. It could look good. So let's give it a go. So this is the yellow. It's exactly the same as the pink. And we'll see which one I like better. Now, when you do tiles, make sure it's straight in your camera. Otherwise it looks shit. Okay, that's looking good. I'm gonna take that shot. Ooh. The yellow is actually really cool. It's very colorful. I think it adds an extra pop of interest. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert my hand again. Okay. Now when you're hand modeling, you wanna keep your hand very like relaxed and dainty. There's definitely an art to it. And obviously you wanna have nice hands and nice nails. So that's the photo done. Now, not all photos have to take a billion years to set up. This was really quick and easy. It's super colorful. It'll look really good on the client's feed. And I just love the pop of yellow and the purple together. Now, we can actually take this exact same scene and we can do a whole video with it. So if you are doing photo and video for your client, you can take the exact same scene that you've set up and create a whole video around it. And Alistair is going to show you right now how you can do that. Oh yeah, there's something about you. All right guys, Amanda has just wrapped up with filming her photos. So we're now gonna do video and what I'll start with is the lighting. So you can see behind us here, the set looks a bit different to what Amanda had set up and that's because we've swapped out the flashlights or the strobe lights to continuous. So let's walk around the set and I'll show you everything that we've got set up in terms of lighting. So I'm using just a two light setup. It's pretty basic. And the way that I've approached this has been, okay, this is a shower scene and behind the curtain is where the shower is meant to be. So it, in my mind, I would imagine that the light is coming from that shower area where the, the person in the shower might be. That's more likely where an overhead light or something might be. So I've tried to use that kind of realism to inform my lighting position um, because I want it to look real and natural. So I've got an overhead light as well because in a bathroom, you'll have lights up on the ceiling, of course. So for that, I'm using a Godox SL60W and um, I'm using a C-stand to get that overhead. And of course, with any C-stand where you've got the light out on an arm, you wanna make sure you've got sandbags on those legs of your C-stand. And then if we come around the other side, this is where we have an Aperture 300D and I've got a big parabolic softbox on that guy. And I'm also shooting it into a second layer of diffusion paper here. And that's because if, we are, if I want this to feel really natural. I don't want to see like a big round softbox reflecting off the product. I want to make it so it's just like even light spread up the side of that product. So if I didn't have that diffusion silk right there, you would see this round little dot on the product. And so that diffusion paper is dealing with that. And it's just giving a nice light up that left hand side of the product. Before I shoot, it's important that I have a bit of a plan going into the shoot. So let's go and we'll just jump into the computer real quick and I'll show you the preparation that I've done. Okay, so you can see here, I have laid down a really basic little track. So what I have here is an audio from Instagram. This is gonna be like a seven, eight second video for Instagram Reels. So I found the audio that I want and then using that audio, I was able to inform how many different shots that I need. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six different shots. And I've put those all into a shot list here over in Milanote. And we're just gonna work through this shot list and go through item by item as uh, we shoot. Okay, I wanna run you guys through some of the gear that I'm using for this set. And the main thing you're probably noticing here is on my tripod, I have this piece of gear, which is what's gonna give this video some movement. It's gonna give me controlled camera movement. And what this is, is the CPAN Arm 2 by 9 Solutions. And I absolutely love this tool and it's super efficient as well. If you already have a photography scene set up, you can just put this onto the top of the, your tripod, touch your camera and you can raise the height and change the position of where your camera is moving from super easily. So you don't have to set up say multiple tripods if you were to set up a slider or put a table in front of this or anything. 
And the other thing is that this not only gives me horizontal side to side movement, but it also gives parallax movement, which means that the camera is going to stay pointing towards my subject as it moves left to right. And the same thing happens with vertical movement. So I can get like high to low, or low to high tracking camera movements, and even diagonal on this as well, as you'll see throughout the rest of this video. Now, while I'm shooting, I'm also using my Ninja 5 monitor. So this is just a really great piece of gear that allows me to check my focus, my lighting, my composition of my shots. It's, it's great. I use it on every product shoot that I do. And on the front of my lens here, I also have a 1.8 strength ProMist filter. That's just giving a tiny little bit of, of diffusion to the highlights. So just a little bit of extra sort of effects going on there. And then in terms of gear that's creating more of the practical effects in this scene, we've actually got this steamer right here. This is a clothing steamer and it just is like a steam gun. And the idea with adding this is because this is a shower scene, I want to have some steam coming out from behind that shower, behind the products to really kind of sell this shower effect that we're going for. And then for the camera and the lens, I'm shooting on my Sony a7S III and then my G Master 24 to 70. And I've actually got my lens set to 35 millimeters right now. This is just giving me a nice look that I like um, for product work. It's what I'm enjoying at the moment. So with all of the gear and the lighting out of the way, let's go ahead and start shooting this video. Alrighty, so ready for the first shot now. Now to begin, I'm just gonna turn on my steam. So that's getting that steam happening. And the first shot that I'm gonna do is a horizontal parallax. And this is what that looks like. So I'm just taking my camera out to the side and the camera is gonna stay pointing at the subject. So I'm gonna come behind the curtain here, hit record. And now I'm just gonna slowly, just using my fingertips, my thumb and just moving my body weight forward just slowly and keeping that motion nice and consistent. All right, I'm gonna get shot two now. So all I've done is change this to diagonal. So it's on a different movement path. Now there's a pin here that'll keep that in place. So I'm gonna lift that up and I'm hanging onto the side of this. So I don't want that to fall. And got my steam going, we'll hit record. And then I'm gonna slowly lower it down like this. All righty, shot number three. So what we're doing with this is a vertical parallax movement. So just like the shot we started with was a horizontal parallax movement where the camera tracked the subject as it moved from left to right. This time we are just moving vertically as it tracks the subject from high to low. So I'm gonna be doing that type of shot, this type of camera movement for the shampoo and the conditioner. So we'll go and demonstrate that shot right now. And one more thing with this shot, I'm actually going to time it with Amanda pouring some shampoo over the label. So the camera is gonna start up high. We're gonna see this shampoo pouring and oozing down the front of the label as the camera lowers down and starts shooting up. So ideally there'll be camera movement at the same time as some actual motion happening in the scene itself. So let's go ahead and give this go. Amanda, I think if you unscrew the lid um, so you can actually pour instead of squeeze out, that's gonna be the way to do it. Can you reach that okay? Okay, good. All right, we are rolling. Okay. All right, start pouring. Okay, and get away. All right, we've just done the shampoo. We're gonna do the exact same thing with the conditioner and this is gonna be kind of like a match cut type thing because it's the exact same movement, exact same focal length. We're just swapping out the product. So we'll get that shot done now. Okay, next shot is the same camera movement. We're focusing on the scrubber now, and we're gonna show the shampoo oozing off the edges of the spikes of the scrubber. So same camera movement, the man is gonna be pouring. I'm starting high and then moving low as those drips are dripping off. All right, and go for it. Just get a nice good coverage forward and back. Yep, and yep, move away. That wraps up this shoot. This tutorial continues inside Become a Brand Video Creator where I'll be showing you how I edited this video and for you to see what that video looks like, here it is for you right now. Oh yeah, there's something about you.